Greetings, mortals. Today, I tell you why Duskwall, the city and campaign setting of Blades in the Dark, is ideal as a resource for game masters to use while preparing for their game. Welcome to Tabletop Sandbox. I am a leader of one of the cults to one of the many forgotten gods, but I'm not going to tell you which one also known as Harrison Tar. If you enjoy this kind of content and would like to see more about Blades in the Dark and TTRPGs in general, please subscribe and leave a comment letting me know that you enjoy this. It's very helpful to the channel. Thank you. So, I've been playing a lot of Blades in the Dark recently. Specifically, I've been running it as a game master. And there are a few things that I've noticed that, I'll be honest, make this maybe my favorite DTRPG that I've played ever. But let me delve into a few of those noticings to explain to you exactly why I think that the campaign setting in this book is a perfect resource for game masters. So the setting, magic, factions, and lore of Blades in the Dark are all connected to each other, but most importantly, to the mechanics. And having the mechanics connected to the way that you want the players to play is ideal game design. You find yourself playing the way that this game was intended to be played, even just by following the rules, even without that example of here's how the game is supposed to go, which is really opposite to my experience with D&D. I've had to break out of just following the rules in order to play the game that I wanted to play and encourage the type of playing that I wanted to have from players at my table. I so appreciate Blades in the Dark because it picked an interesting genre and it stuck with it. It picked one lane and stayed there. It said, we're gonna do Ocean's Eleven in a spooky, haunted Victorian city surrounded by impassable wasteland. It is super cool. And the more I read about the lore, the more I like it. But it is excellent because the entire game, mechanics included, all of the stuff in this book works toward achieving a specific feel, vibe, or genre that you play as. And of course, there's some variation. If you play as Bravos, you're gonna deal with a lot more action scenes than if you're playing as Shadows. Those are crew types, by the way. One is basically loud and, what's the word? the opposite of subtle. The bravos are basically loud and boisterous thugs, whereas the shadows are your classic thieves. Not focused on assassinations, that's another crew type, or anything like that. They just get in, steal what they wanna steal, and get out. They're all about stealth and picking locks. Or they can be. There's a lot of flexibility in this game. But those are just variations within one very clearly established genre of this haunted city and the player characters being members of a crew that is a gang amongst so many other gangs and factions within the city of Duskwall. And here's what really makes the campaign setting of Duskwall excellent as a resource for game masters. This book gives enough information to inform and inspire, but beyond that, it barely gives anything. It only gives you enough information to give you a general idea of what this city is like in a number of different facets, don't get me wrong, but it stops at the point where it is inspiring and informative and does not cross over that line into, you know, paragraphs and paragraphs of lore that some might find interesting, but is hard to make actionable as a GM unless you're a super, super big fan of the setting. Which I am, don't get me wrong, but more reading is a barrier to using that material. If it's just a line or a small paragraph, that I can work with. That I can look up even on the fly during the middle of a session and use. Whereas reading through entire pages of lore, not really something that is actionable as a GM, though it might be interesting as a consumer of media. So I'm gonna break it down into three main reasons 
why Blades in the Dark is so excellent, or specifically Duskfall, is so excellent as a resource for game masters. First, there is inspiring and yet uncomplicated lore. There are a few things I want to touch on. First of all, there is a small paragraph describing each of the heritages from each of the Shattered Isles, which is kind of the world map of Blades in the Dark, that allow players to be from places that aren't here and give just enough information to inspire that character to know what that person is like. And then they can interpret it however they want beyond that initial bit of information. For example, if you want to be from a marginalized people, you should be from Skovlon, the island kingdom just across the sea from Duskfall. Skovlon was last to be brought under imperial rule under the course of the 36-year Unity War, which only ended a few years ago. Many Skovlander refugees who lost their homes and jobs in the destruction of the war have come to Duskfall seeking new opportunities. That is enough information to spread out this complex world with a lot of interesting relationships between countries and ethnicities and things like that and put that in front of you, but it is not more information than that. It invokes a much broader and more complex world than it is actually describing. It only gives you that one paragraph and then you have ideas that just keep flying through your head about, oh, what character could I make who is a Skovlander? And that's just one of six in the very small, less than one page section on heritages. And there's the same or less description describing the entirety of each of those shattered isles. Really the only place that they go in detail in is the single city of Duskfall. And that's all you need because let me tell you, it is detailed. They also delve into the lore of the magic and supernatural and spooky stuff in Duskfall, and really in the world in general, in a chapter called Strange Forces, which is only 20 pages of this over 300 page book that describes all of the strange happenings, the ghosts, the vampires, the hulls, and the rituals, everything that is weird that you could come across in Duskval is included there. In brief, detail, just enough to tell you what it is and give you the right impression of it, but specifics are left up to the game master. And finally, in this book they include a lot of details about Duskfall and about the world in general, but they only do so by hinting at it, not keeping it a secret, but only giving you evocative details rather than going into great depth of the way things happened or the way things work. For example, it is told multiple times in this book, mentioned at least, that about a thousand years ago or over a thousand years ago, the sun was shattered in a great cataclysm and now the world is plunged into eternal darkness except for at dusk and dawn when the pieces of the shattered sun glow in the sky. That is super cool and makes you really interested to figure out what the heck is going on here and if you're like me who loves reading you know, fantasy novels thicker than a loaf of bread, then you would want to read a whole bunch more about that. But they don't include more about that. They only give you what you need to describe it to your players. And in fact, a lot of this is discovering the details of the world together with your players. As a GM, I leave a lot up to my players because a lot of it isn't defined yet. And that is ideal for gameplay. That is bringing in that essence of collaborative storytelling that I have really fallen in love with over the course of my gaming career. Next, Duskfall itself. Duskwall, Duskwall, there are two different spellings, actually three if you count the Dusk as a name of the city, but if you hear me pronouncing it slightly differently, that's why. Duskwall itself, the city, is incredibly detailed, but not in a way that is overwhelming. Reason two why this book is an ideal resource, even just the campaign setting part of it is an ideal resource, is that it has easily usable 
maps, and districts. The information on Doskval begins with a map of the entire city and a brief description, just a few paragraphs or even a sentence, about each of the districts and a few key locations. And of those key locations, like Old Northport or Gadok Rail Station, this is the only information in the book about it. But for Gadok Rail Station, it's all you need. Electro rail trains from across the Imperium arrive here daily with goods and passengers. Now that thought alone, if your players like trains, might be enough to decide on what their first score is going to be. We're going to rob the electric ghost train. Tell me that doesn't sound cool. But then it gives a brief description of each of the districts within Duskfall. It gives you an idea of what that district is like. Like Brightstone, the grand mansions and luxury shops of the wealthy elite. That is a single sentence. Not even a sentence, a sentence fragment that gives you a basic idea of what Brightstone is like. And that could be all you need to implement it into your games. However, if you would like a little more details, each of the districts has this little two-page spread, really it's two-thirds of a page on each side, giving you information about that district. It gives a single paragraph description of what the district is like, to add to that initial idea that's been planted in your mind by the brief description, and then it gives a single paragraph description of four or five key locations within that district. What is this district known for? And you might think, oh, well, that's not enough. What if I want to go to these other places within the district? I don't know enough about it. But one, wouldn't you want your players to go to the most iconic places in Duskfall? These are the main characters of the story that you're telling in this setting. Why would they go to some other place that you made up or another less important, interesting place than what is the most iconic spot in that district. Go with that. And there's pretty much a location to fit any need you have. Like in Brightstone, you have the Sanctorum, which is the massive cathedral to the Church of the Ecstasy of the Flesh, which is kind of the state religion in Duskfall, if it were to have such a thing. Then, it gives you a brief description of a scene in Brightstone, which describes basically as your player character is walking through the streets of Brightstone, what would they see? Then, it describes what the streets are like and gives a few example names. It describes what the buildings look like, and then it gives you one or two or three notable NPCs that reside within that district. It also has a little chart here talking about the wealth, safety and security, criminal influence, and occult influence in the district. And then one more mechanical detail. In Brightstone, its most engagement rolls suffer minus one die due to heavy blue coat patrols. Operations against the nobility in Brightstone are considered hostile turf for the purpose of generating heat. That is incredibly actionable info. All of this is, oops, all of this is. It is all information that you might take and use all of it in the game with your players. And that's the beautiful thing about it. You don't have to use all the lore all at once because it is a lot, even 20 pages is enough to not be able to memorize and include all in your first session, but you don't need to use all 20 pages. You just need to find the one or two interesting things that you want to include in this session, read up on those, and throw those into your game. Another excellent idea or philosophy that they've included in their world building is that they include the idea that there is not a patch of land or an informant or a person who could help you who is not already claimed by a faction. You start with some friends and allies to go along with your crew, but anybody other than that owes allegiance to another faction, another gang, or a city organization, or this patch of land is the territory of one gang, and that gang might be under the control of the larger gang, the ward boss of the district. That is a really interesting thing that adds 
conflict to every single attempt at a score where you're trying to take something. Because everything, whether it be a contact or an ally or a resource or turf, it's all claimed and spoken for by another faction. And by doing that, by taking that, you're making an enemy of that faction. Making an enemy who could then come back later and influence the story by creating conflict with the player characters and their crew. And speaking of factions and people, that is the third reason, I kind of already summarized it, but this is the third reason why this is an ideal tool for game masters. There are simple and intertwined factions and notable NPCs. Like I said, in each of these districts, there are some NPCs. Going back to Brightstone, one of the NPCs is Commander Bowmore, Chief Officer of the Watch in Brightstone. Bowmore's family financed Bowmore Bridge centuries ago and now holds many positions of power. And then it gives a brief description, just three adjectives of Commander Bowmore. Proud, principled, connected. And that is the only entry on Lord Bowmore, even though he might be a central figure to your campaign. We know that he's part of the Watch, which means he's a part of the Bluecoats faction. And then you can go to the entry on Bluecoats and get a little bit more information about that. And then you can look at the entry for Bowmore Bridge, which is one of the key locations in Brightstone, and get a little bit more information on that. But again, you're not reading more than three or four paragraphs to completely prepare you no knowing everything there is to know about that information, and then use it in your game. Going to those faction descriptions, just like the districts, it begins with a single sentence or a couple sentences describing that faction very broadly. So for the Blue Coats, it describes them as the City Watch of Duskwall, tasked with upholding the law, known as the meanest gang in the city, corrupt, violent, and cruel. And that's another hallmark of the genre of Blades in the Dark, is that it would be a shock if there was a single person within the city's walls who wasn't corrupt, who wasn't held captive by their vice, who wasn't tempted into doing things that weren't to their best interests, or at least not to the best interests of their allies. And then there are several pages with a half page description of factions. They give you information, maybe a little bit more details in that initial description. They tell you where they have their turf. Sometimes they give you a specific location in districts of their headquarters. Sometimes they don't. You have to extrapolate or pick where it makes the most sense for you to include it in your game. It gives you a few key NPCs who might just be described by a few words, such as Commander Cleland, Chief Commissioner of the City Watch, and then the adjective descriptions corrupt, cruel, arrogant. This is a coworker. This is a boss of Commander Bowmore. Or Bowmore. Which one did I say before? It gives you notable assets of that faction. It tells you a quirk about them, something that is strange and unique and you wouldn't have guessed by just looking at them. It tells you who their allies and their enemies are, usually other factions. And then it tells you what their current situation is, which defines any struggles that they're facing and what their current goals are, which, if you've watched my NPC video, is Perhaps the single most important thing to know about an NPC or a faction is what they are trying to achieve. And it gives you those descriptions for many, many of the factions. But some, like the Path of Echoes, only get the brief one sentence description at the head of the factions section. They don't get that further detailed information in that half-page paragraph where they tell you all about the key NPCs and their allies and enemies. The Path of Echoes is listed as allies or enemies of some of the other factions, and so you can learn a little bit more about it like that, but it doesn't give you all that information. Granted, it is supposed to be a secret society, but you as the Game Master 
are supposed to know better. They also give you a description of vice purveyors, which is a key mechanic in this game. You indulge your vice to relieve stress, and there are a bunch of vice purveyors who are tied to specific locations or even specific people. And then in the back, if that wasn't enough, they give you a whole bunch of random tables to randomly generate streets, buildings, and more importantly to this point that I'm making, people. They let you develop their looks, their goals, their preferred methods of accomplishing those goals, their common or rare profession, and then traits, interests, quirks. You can develop a full and detailed NPC based on these pages that didn't exist in Duskwall before. This book is an excellent resource for game masters because it includes enough lore to inform and inspire without overwhelming the person who's trying to consume it, or the person who's frantically looking back through that book in the middle of a session because they know they saw something, and they don't have to look through paragraphs and paragraphs, it is in a clearly labeled section under that faction, or under that district. The campaign setting in this book doesn't get overcomplicated or require that intense studying that might be required in much wordier, much more robust, at least word count wise, campaign setting. Now I will acknowledge it doesn't give you every single little thing you need to run the game, but what it does give you is the ideas to create everything you need to run this game. Any major questions you have are either answered within the short and to the point descriptions in this book, or you come to realize after getting familiar with the book after a little while, the answer to that question is, there is no answer, make one up. And I love doing that as a game master. This is kind of a ideal marriage of a campaign setting already prepared for me and hey, the world is your oyster, invent within it how you wish. It almost creates or requires you to have that creativity and come up with interesting things, but it provides plenty of fodder, of ideas of what the answer to your question might be, even if they don't provide that specific answer. I do hope I've conveyed how much I'm enjoying taking the skeleton of Duskwall in this book and making it my own in my campaigns. Thank you for watching, because in doing so you have added a tick to my progress clock, a crew adherence to the hidden faith. If you know of the conspiracy, you are of the conspiracy. Good night, mortals.